Hello everybody, welcome to Bod Labs. I have created PKG Listen, manage Linux packages with text files. Let me demonstrate how it works and then we can talk about how you could use it too. It's very easy to use and I think it will work on many different Linux package manager setups, whatever. Here is a file called .config package listen packages it's this file here in the file browser and this is just a text editor it doesn't matter which text editor you use it doesn't matter which terminal emulator you will see it's fine um, this is a list of packages obviously uh, and it is actually the packages I have manually installed on this uh, Arch Linux installation and as you can see here we have two packages redshift and gamma step and both of those actually actually do the exact same thing and uh, there's no point of having both of those installed so i will actually remove redshift from this list and then i will just to make this obvious i will save this file here control s save and there, when I do that, when I save this package list file, you see a terminal is opened. A new terminal will get opened with a summary here. The commands below will get executed, sudo pacman r redshift, because I removed redshift from this uh, list. It uh, will mark that package for removal and uh, yeah, execute the remove package command here, which on my system is sudo pacman r redshift. Press any key except escape to continue. Actually, I don't want to use this, uh, or I want to remove this, but I don't want to, when I think about it, I don't want to use this command here. So I will press escape and that just aborts uh, the operation because I think I want to configure the settings here uh, to instead uh, remove with the, let's see, there is U, so R is U instead. Uh, because that will also remove uh, dependencies and stuff like that. So if I go back to this file and simply save it again, it will bring up the preview again or the terminal again here, and now we can see that RSU is uh, included. And as you might under, uh, figure out here, you could replace even Pacman with a different command here to remove packages. So I think this will be uh, is uh, distro agnostic but i have not tried it on anything other than arch uh, but let's continue here if i press uh, any other key it will uh, instead execute the commands here listed in the summary and there could be multiple commands here but now we just have one single pacman rsu command um, and then it prompts me for the password because it tries to execute this pseudo pacman rsu redshift command uh, i will enter the password and it asks me if I really want to remove this. Yes. And there you could also add, you know, no confirm option to Pac-Man, for instance, if you want to do that. And now um, Redshift is not on my system anymore. Redshift, it is removed. So if I want to install something with this uh, setup, I simply just add it here. Redshift. Save that file, and now it will instead install Redshift using the install command here. We can also see there is an install foreign command. Uh, I'm using yay, the AUR helper, and this means you can also install like, uh, if I press escape here, and then let's add some AUR packages here. Uh, I don't know, I2S, tpisk. These are my own packages. I don't think I have the AUR uh, packages installed, but maybe I do. It doesn't matter if I enter something that is already installed, it will simply ignore that. Uh, I'll save this file now. And now we see we have two commands uh, to install Redshift and also to use yay to install these AUR packages. Press any key, pressing any key, and then it will start with the first command here to install Redshift, prompts me for the password. There, okay, installs that, and then it will uh, immediately execute the next command, uh, which is JS I2S TPISCT. So, you see, it, it just executes these commands normally in the terminal. And you might, so, some of you skeptics <laughs> out there might say, well, what's the point of this? Can't I just enter these commands manually in a terminal? It simply just opens the terminal. 
But the whole point of this is that you get this, a list of everything you have installed. This is what you, what I wanted, uh, and now I have it. This is something I've tried to set this up and figure out how to do this in a good way. And this is a good way, I know it is. Uh, because now I, it, you get a good overview of everything you have installed, and it's easy to, to manage your, your installation like this. For example, if you realize uh, I, uh, you find a better media player or a better Redshift alternative like Gamma Step here, and then you might even have forgotten that you installed Redshift. But if you have everything in a file like this, and you see these are actually this is my actual package installation setup here. I don't have that much stuff really. It's easy to, to get an overview of this file, and this file also there is no. There is no syntax except that you can create uh, uh, comments like this. Uh, these lines will obviously be ignored, but you can add multiple packages to one line. You can group them, you can indent the lines like this. So you can have your own little setup. And it doesn't matter if you enter the same package multiple times. It doesn't matter if you uh, include packages that are already installed, yada yada. It will simply just work. And it also works, uh, for example, or we can we can look at some edge cases immediately here. Um, and just if I save this file, nothing should happen. No. Uh, so let's say I remove Redshift, but I do it manually for some reason. I, I use like the normal way to do that, like Pacman R S U Redshift. Okay. There, remove it. Now it is removed, but it is included in the file. What will happen now? Obviously, when I save this file, is that it will try to install Redshift again, since it is missing. So if I do that, um, or yeah, let's do that. I forgot what I wanted to show you really here now, but the the the, the point is that it's hard to mess this up really, even if you sometimes use the command line or another uh, tool to install packages. It shouldn't mess this setup up and this setup should not mess up like that other workflow. They don't conflict with each other. Uh, th that's at least my goal here to, to make it so that it doesn't do that. Um, let's see, if we remove... I, I really forgot what, what I want to show you here. Yeah, so it will see that this needs to be installed if it isn't installed. Um, and same goes for removing packages, it will see that uh, it, it will simply just work. Well, I guess this is this is one thing. If we remove Redshift from this file, save it, it will now of course remove it, uh, open the terminal. Remove it, okay, there, now it's gone. But then let's say we install it instead um, from the command line. This, now if you do that, you will end up in a situation, of course, then it will not automatically get installed here to your manually created and maintained package file here. So uh, now Redshift is not managed by package listen, you could uh, think of it as, but if you want to manage it with package listen, you simply just add Redshift to this file, and now it is. So. But, uh, but when we did add it here, nothing really happened. We can see this little notification. It's a custom thing I have set up uh, just to know that it updated uh, the package list and stuff here. But nothing really happened. We didn't get a terminal because it was already installed. All that this gives us is uh, yeah, the notion that it is installed simply by it being present in this file. But it also gives us the ability to remove this package by removing it from this file. And now we can remove it. Yeah, now the terminal was too small there, but as you can see, it works. Let's add it here again, because I'm tired of installing, reinstalling Redshift. Um, if um, you have a typo in the file for a package, which is... <laughs> that can happen, it can happen the best. Uh, I know that by experience. So we have a typo, this is a package that doesn't exist anywhere, and then uh, we save this file. We don't get a ter terminal here because it actually it doesn't ignore typos, but it doesn't. Uh, if, if that is the only thing 
in your the only difference from from your installation so to speak it will not bring up the terminal but if we do an action here for example remove typist we will get a warning uh, that uh, this package is not available in any repository and this would also happen if you would set this up on a different distribution than arch which doesn't have AUR for example and uh, if the foreign list foreign command here if that is even either an invalid command or a command that is not found or if you simply comment this line out uh, it will list all packages uh, that are not available from the uh, remote repositories it will list them like this like ty like ty typos or they are not found in any repositories that's how they will get listed um, as we have also seen it um, it automatically just works when you save this file and it works it doesn't matter which text editor you're using i'm using sublime it should work with vim or it does work with vim or leafpad <laughs> nano it doesn't matter and, and it that is because it uses systemd and a path unit here that will um, uh, look for modifications to this path and these systemd uh, units they are installed with um, uh, from the make file actually so when you do sudo make install on this repository it will install the systemd units if systemd is present in your system so if you install this on on void for example it will not install any stupid systemd units there uh, but if you have systemd installed it will also install these units but it will not enable those units for you so i thought uh, maybe now we could uh, uh, simulate an installation of this package listen command itself and I will do it here since I'm using arch I will uh, use that as the demonstration first I need to prepare some stuff here um, need to system ctl uh, there this reload packages path that is I have like a, a, a local version of this which brings up the notification and stuff like that so whatever I need to stop that uh, so now it will simply not uh, do this when I save the file nothing happens because the systemd unit is not active and then I will delete this cache file and then I will delete the uh, configuration files as well and the configuration files is the package file and the settings file here so i will actually delete them i have a backup don't worry it will be fine there and then we close this also because close without saving good and this too close without saving. there nice then we can get, go back to the repository because there are installation instructions here so arch linux users these are the instructions as you can see it's uh, quite a lot uh, than it normally is from AR because yeah we look into it soon or clone and install from source then you do this doesn't matter which one of these you use but this will only work on AR uh, supported distributions okay so uh, installing stuff from AR you can either do it like this or you can use an AR helper like this and I use the AR helper here now because it's faster so yay capital S package listen it will install the latest version here which was released like 10 minutes ago 15 minutes ago um, yes install that thank you very much I will look into I, I think there is a way to kind of add messages uh, when you install packages now when I think about it with uh, AUR because there are some additional steps that I highly advise anyone trying this out is that you first and foremost execute this command so package listen with a lowercase v and that will simply just um, uh, 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 print out version information but if you keep an eye here on the file manager you will see that it will also create the default settings files there you see it created this directory with the default settings here but it also prints out the version information but then it doesn't do anything else and if the files are already present it will not create them um, next thing you would like you want to do is actually configure the settings so you can just cut out the settings file ah that was what i was supposed to do this there's a typo here this doesn't work uh, 
So get out the settings file, pkg listen settings. Uh, because one thing that is quite annoying is that the def default terminal command is xterm, so it will open xterm as the terminal and maybe you don't even have xterm installed you can you, it should be possible to use any terminal emulator really and you should be able to figure out how to do that uh, by looking at the example commands here uh, so i will actually uh, change this to use uh, i3 term open these settings and as you can see these are the default settings here now so if i change this to this one is what I would like to use because then I have a different uh, color scheme here also making it more obvious that it is a new terminal uh, save that and you might also want to add stuff here for example su to the remove commands here if you want to whatever okay uh, instructions then you want to uh, enable the system D um, units that was installed here so they will already be installed for you when you do this systemctl no sudo important user because this is a, is a user units which um, needs to know about the user's home directory to find the user's configuration files here so that's why it is like this uh, systemctl user enable and that means it will enable this unit uh, it will be automatically started when you log in or when you enter your graphical session because it needs a graphical session um, uh, because it opens a terminal emulator and a new terminal emulator so that is why it needs the graphical session whatever um, and now everything is set up and now we can just start adding packages to the package file and the default package file looks like this it's just two comments write down the packages you want to install in this file line starting with a sharp and blank lines are ignored so if we enter a package here i don't know i3 as and save this it should now uh, open the terminal but only if that package is not installed i3 as was already installed on this system so it doesn't do anything so yet again you can just start using this on top of a already um, or already existing uh, installation. I don't know. Let's install SuperTux. And there, it found that in the official repository. SuperTux. Press any key to to continue. Yes. And there, <laughs> we are we are using this now. That's how easy it is. And you could, as we I mentioned many times, uh, either use AUR installed from there or clone the repository, and it's it's the same same thing. But with the caveat, if you uh, are not using Arch, you may need to uh, set the prefix, but you know that. Um, so by default, it will use uh, USR as the prefix. Maybe you want USR local uh, when you install stuff like third party applications like this. Then you just simply change the prefix before you make install. Um, and that's. <laughs> that's that uh, the background here a bit why uh, everything fell into place for me how this should be set up when I tried Nix OS because on Nix OS um, you declare everything in the Nix language you declare your system installation and configuration in, in Nix um, and included in that declaration is the packages you want to have installed on the system and it is basically like this, that you enter the packages you want to have installed in, in a function or in an array or something like that. And if you simply just remove one of those packages and rebuild NixOS, it will remove that package from the installation. So it is, it works kind of like that. That particular thing works similar to, to how Nix does it. And that is really what inspired me. Uh, and made me realize how this should be set up because I have tried to get this something like this working for years I like every time I, I install Linux I try to keep track of the packages I install manually by sometimes I have tried to to manually entering the packages to a list every time I install something but that always fall apart you know you forgot to or forget to to 
enter packages or forget to remove packages from that list and it gets weird with dependencies and do you need to have separate lists for AUR and official repositories, blah, blah, blah. It always falls apart and it never works. Uh, and the reason for that is that it's the wrong approach to take. You need to, or you need to, but this is the best way to do it, I believe, to instead make the list like the, the core where you install packages from. You have to enter them to the list and then it will instead execute the commands instead of the other way around that you execute a command and that in turn manipulates the list. Another benefit of it uh, using this method is that yeah, you can curate your list and, and format it the, the way you want. If you have this, if you have the list created automatically, then you will end up with something like the cache file uh, with just a static uh, sorted list like this, which can get really hard to read and maintain if you, when you get into the hundreds of packages, which is not impossible to do. But if you manage it yourself, it's much easier to maintain it and uh, nicer. Uh, the reason why I really want this list is, if you haven't figured it out, it's because it's nice to have a list of the packages that you have installed. The um, thing is, I, I think I want to uh, do this. So this is my backup list. I will now replace the default list with that. See if it installs something, I don't know. Yeah, now it will remove super tux because that is not part of, of this list here. So that is also how that works. Um, yeah, we can do that. So the reason you want a list like this, yeah, is simply because it's uh, easy to maintain. But you can also now include like this list with your dot files. I have it in my personal secret private dot file repository here. I have the packages here in my dot files. Uh, so you can include that with your dot file repository with your other settings and, and dot files because of course they belong <laughs> with the dot files. But uh, it has uh, up until this been hard to do that on, on uh, other distributions than these declarative distributions like uh, Arch and or, or Nix and Geeks for example. Um, and it should work. Uh, with other distributions, uh, kind of, maybe. Uh, I have not tested it and I have no idea how it works, how it would work with, for example, flat packs and snaps and app images, which have like even yet another way of installing and stuff like that. I have not tested it because it's not, not something that interests me. Maybe I will extend this in the future to kind of uh, separately treat uh, uh, flat packs, which I believe will be the <laughs> standard of the of the three containerized package uh, uh, formats. There, I, I don't know. <laughs> I I really don't care about that stuff. But I think there will there might come a day when we kind of can't ignore those things anymore. But at the moment, it's perfectly fine. You can have a normal uh, computer <laughs> life without. Uh, uh, acknowledging those technologies, but it might also be possible to replace like the the yay command here. I, 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 the thing is, I don't know how it works. Is there like an AUR for flat packs or something? Maybe there is, and maybe you can replace this with that. Then I I don't know, and I don't care. But uh, it should work like to install apt install, uh, super install or whatever it's called and the DNF install, whatever. You, you should be able to replace this with other distributions, package manager uh, command lines. Um, and it would be very cool to, if uh, people watch this video and you are using a different distribution, please try, just try it out. It should not break anything, you know, since what happens is that it opens this external terminal uh, and then that is just a normal interactive terminal. It doesn't do anything uh, that you don't press yes, enter your password. It, it, there's a lot of steps that you, the user, have to take to break things. You could, of course, break things. If I would do this, for example, if I <laughs> remove everything from the package file here, like that, and then I save. Why didn't it work? Ah, that's right, that's right. This is my dot .files package file and that is usually symlinked, but now it isn't. And uh, now it isn't. Uh, so go here. If I remove everything from the package file, 
save this then it will of course want to uninstall every single package here <laughs> and that is probably not what you want you know things like this could happen but it is kind of logical why this is happening since you actually removed these lines from the or these packages from the package file then it will try to mark them for removal but it will not remove them until you have actually confirmed everything in these uh, th the multiple dialogues that will pop up here asking you for removal and stuff like that so it shouldn't break anything and if you see something like this that you really don't want to do you just press escape here and then you restore your file or whatever or one thing that you can always do you can actually do this remove everything or if you remove the cache file like you have an empty cache file and then you have an empty package list then it will not try to remove anything but then you would have an empty thing here but then now we have an empty cache file here uh, if we now enter all our packages again and save it will not install everything again because they, everything is already installed it will figure out it will see that it will all only try to install packages that are not installed and it will only try to remove packages that is installed if you get what i mean um, we don't have to look into the script but it's not that complicated as you can see it's about 170 lines now uh, but um, the magic is really here these uh, com commands here which compare different lists so it compares what is installed what is available um, remotely what is it's is available on the foreign repositories yada yada to figure out what to install and what to remove and where to install stuff from and stuff like that it's not a big uh, deal to figure out how these uh, commands work here and that is basically all it does um, I am very pleased with how this have finally turned out and it the thing is I started working on this like two weeks ago um, and it was working uh, initially it was working fine uh, it was the first thing I did basically on on this arch installation here because I I, I installed arch again I don't want to get into that whole distro thing you know but I'm not using Ubuntu anymore I used Ubuntu for about th three months but now I use Arch I will not use Ubuntu again but it was a uh, it was fine Ubuntu was working as ex expected and maybe that is the problem uh, whatever I'm using Arch and this was one of the first thing I wanted to set up and the reason I could just as well have set this up on Ubuntu now when I know how I did it here when it became like distro agnostic Initially, it was only for Arch and Pac-Man, but I realized, hey, this it's easy to modify this to be to be distro agnostic. Uh, <clears throat> but I have also <laughs> like tried to record this video for about two weeks, and every time I record it, I notice some bug or some something that I want to improve or get a, a, a new ID. So I have, uh, as you can see, 62 commits. That's quite a lot uh, by Budrich standards here. So. Uh, this has been a lot more work than I thought it would be, but uh, it seems to work really well now. And I am sure that I will keep on using this, at least as long as I use Arch. Uh, this is a perfect companion to Pac-Man, for example. Uh, and um, yeah, I think it, it, it simply is a great thing to manage packages with a text file instead of manage them from the command line. Because it's so easy to forget what you have installed and keep track of it. And even if there are commands like Pac-Man commands that lists out uh, all manually installed packages, I never trust them fully uh, that they list exactly what I have installed and, and stuff like that. And th this is both easier to maintain, but it's also more customizable. So the, the, in the way you want things to happen and stuff like that. I think it's really cool. And I hope that others will find use for this too. It's uh, released under <laughs> unlicensed public domain uh, license here. So do whatever you want. If you want to build uh, 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 an Arch uh, spin distribution and use this as the default package manager, rebrand it, uh, call it something else and don't credit me at all, that's fine. I, I really don't care. But I think if you are doing something like that, you should credit me and the original source for this even if you're not uh, uh, obliged uh, to but you should do that 
I can see that I have gotten one more star here uh, today. So I already have three stars without advertising this at all. People are already finding this. I think it's it's cool and I hope now with this video that people understand what it actually does and how it works. And <laughs> to use it you simply add and remove packages from this package file. It's, it's, uh, it's easy peasy. Uh, have a great day everybody. See you in the next video.